This video describes how to bleed the brakes on a Lexus RX 400H hybrid. This is the same procedure that would be used on the Toyota Highlander hybrid, the Camry hybrid, uh, probably also the Lexus RH uh, 450 hybrid, as well as perhaps the Prius. I have not verified the Prius, but most likely it's the same procedure. It's a special procedure because the hydraulic braking system uh, for the rears is not directly connected to the pedal. So conventionally, after you change the pads, you would pump the pedal to push fresh fluid into each of the, the brake calipers at each wheel and remove any air that may have entered the system. Can't do that on the hybrid because you cannot actuate the rear brakes with the brake pedal. What you need to use to do that is a Windows XP laptop running the Toyota TechStream software and a USB to OBD adapter. So I'm going to walk you through the procedure. Start by launching the TechStream application. It's best if you can borrow a PC from someone who is a Toyota technician and has access to the software. Uh, it also may be possible to acquire it by other means, but I uh, would, would not necessarily recommend that. Um, the cable itself can be purchased from Amazon. I will provide a link on how to purchase that. It was about $30 and it came with the CD containing the required drivers. Turn the key switch on so that the vehicle controller is powered up and now I'm going to click connect to vehicle and it will attempt to communicate with the controller and identify the type of vehicle. And you can see it is a Lexus RX 400H. It's going to ask me to select which options it has. This vehicle does not have the laser cruise control. So I will do that, hit next. And then it's loaded. You're now at the main system selection menu and we're going to select the ABS VSC track option. That's analog braking system, vehicle stability control, and traction control. I'm going to open that by double clicking and wait for it to connect to that module and bring up the screen. And what you notice is there are two active fall codes. The bleeding procedure may not run if there are fall codes. So we're going to erase the fall codes by clicking this button. And you'll have the option to store these fault codes in case you want to see which ones are active later. I'm just going to hit clear. And the codes have been cleared. And now we're going to go to the utility menu. And we're going to select the air bleeding procedure and then the arrow at the bottom to move to that test. And I'm going to walk you through these screens and you can see it's used to purge air from the hydraulic braking system. So the vehicle is stopped and we'll make sure the parking brake is applied and the, the ignition switch is on. The next button, we're going to select usual air bleeding because this is just a pad replacement. We've not replaced the actuator or the master cylinder, but if you have replaced those components, select the appropriate test or function there. Next, and you can just uh, select one line at a time to, to bleed, but I would suggest going with all lines and going through the complete procedure. Now it says to turn off the ignition switch, remove the two ABS motor relays, and then turn the ignition switch back on, and I'll show you how to do that. 
So now it's the, uh, the one part where you have to interact with the vehicle a little more. Turn the ignition switch off, remove the two ABS motor relays, and then turn the ignition switch back on. So I'm gonna walk you through that sequence. Turning the key off. And I have this staged for quick demonstration purposes. You can see under the hood, first remove the front cover and then the rear cover. And next, uh, you see the relay housing right here. And in that relay housing in the back, there are two relays and need to remove both of those. So there's one, there's the second, Go back, turn the vehicle on, and we will continue with the usual air bleeding procedure. And we're at the next step that says to connect vinyl tube to the bleeder plug of the front right wheel. Depress the brake several times, so you'll have to have someone else depressing the brake pedal and building up pressure. And then with the pedal depressed, you will release the bleeder valve with the pedal held down and a tiny amount of fluid will come out and then tighten the, the bleeder valve back and you'll have to repeat that multiple times. Here you see the tools. This is the vinyl bleeder with a check valve on the end so that air does not get back up into the line an eight millimeter wrench, and then a clear bottle to catch the liquid at the wheel. Here you can see inside the front right wheel, passenger side wheel, uh, there's the brake caliper, and there's the wrench attached to the bleeder valve. And out of that wrench, you can see the vinyl tube comes down and into the plastic bottle. So, Again, have the person, your helper, depress the brake pedal, hold it down, and you will loosen the bleeder valve, let a tiny amount of fluid out, tighten it back up, and repeat. Uh, typically, I would say you could leave the bleeder valve open and have the helper depress the, the pedal several times to move more fluid out more quickly. However, I received a vehicle stability control fault when doing that, so I would recommend following the steps exactly as they say here. First with the front right, and then repeat the step with the front left. And again, depress and hold the brake, release the, the bleeder plug, the bleeder valve, close the, the bleeder valve back, and then repeat the procedure multiple times, maybe 20 times, to get uh, sufficient volume of fluid and to make sure that there's no air. Now we're going to hit next and assume that the front wheels have been completed, and that's pretty much a conventional fluid change on any system. Now is when it gets a little different, and we're going to turn the ignition switch off, uh, wait for two minutes for the braking system to go through any tests or purges. Uh, do not press the brake pedal or open and close the doors during this, during this two minutes, and we will assume that the two minutes have passed because I'm not actually doing the test right now. Now we're going to go back under the hood and install the two ABS motor relays. Go back and turn the ignition switch on and proceed to the rear bleeding technique. Now this is where it's different than a conventional system. I'm going to connect the vinyl tube to the rear bleeder plug, depress the brake pedal and hold it down. And this time, when we loosen the bleeder plug, the motor will, under the hood will actuate and will start pumping fluid into uh, the rear of the car to the, the rear brakes. And it will continue to pump fluid uh, basically until you tighten the bleeder plug back. So you will do that first for the rear left wheel and once that's complete, you, you tighten the plug, the motor will stop about 15 seconds after you tighten the plug, and then you repeat it on 
the rear right wheel. So depress the brake pedal and have the helper hold it down and you will loosen the rear bleeder plug let the motor run for approximately 30 seconds until you see either clear fluid or no air or both. And then close the, the bleeder plug back. The motor will stop running and you will be finished at that point. And I will show you an example of how that rear procedure looks at the brake itself. This is the right rear wheel. The brake pedal is depressed. It's in the test mode. I'm going to loosen the bleeder screw and you hear the pump starting to run and you can see it is filling the bottle. Watching for air bubbles. I don't see any air bubbles coming out here. but we will let it run until it's about half full, just to make sure we purge all the brake fluid out of the brake line and replace it with new fluid. We don't want to go so long that the reservoir at the front is empty and gets air in it. Made sure it was full before I started. Some of the concerns there. Now I'm going to close off the bleeder screw and you'll hear the clacking stop and then the pump stops running and the bleed procedure is a procedure for the rear brakes. It's very important to make sure that you do not ever get any air into the main reservoir. The best way to do that to guarantee you don't have a, a problem with air intrusion is you remove the cap and take a new bottle of brake fluid. Uh, this is the Valvoline Synthetic Dot 3 and Dot 4. Uh, dot 3 is all required, but you could use Dot 3, 4, or 5. Uh, but what you do is uh, puncture a small hole in the uh, protective uh, foil that's under this bottle cap, and then you would quickly turn it over and put it into the open reservoir and make sure that it's, uh, the, the top is submerged. What that will do is basically you have an entire bottle of brake fluid ready to refill the reservoir as it drains to make sure you don't get any air in. And then once you're finished, you take, take that out and you'll probably need to remove a little bit of fluid from the top of the reservoir because it will be overfilled and you don't want to have that issue. But it will make sure you don't get air back into the system. You're now finished. You can hit the next button to go back and run through the procedure again if you need to, but really you should be finished you can hit exit to end this procedure and then close out of the ABS module and actually now you can close the program and you should be finished. Go for a test drive and make sure that you have no faults that would show up and that everything's okay and your procedure should be complete.